All right. Hello, everybody. I've got Michelle Fuller with me today. It's a very exciting day because Michelle owns the Michigan Law Center. She's a nationally recognized attorney in special needs planning. She's been featured in the New York Times and has authored many articles and books. And she's also hosted both white glove seminars and webinars to book her to build her book of business. How are you doing today, Michelle? I am great, Kate. Thanks for having me. So exciting to have you. Um, and also, I mean, just thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. I know it's busy, so this time of the summer can get kind of hectic. So I figure we can just cut right to the chase and dive in. Sure. You're really, <laughs> yeah, you're a very accomplished attorney. So what initially attracted you to White Glove? Well, I actually have a, a dedicated person in my, on my staff for education and marketing. And so we tried this on our own course, right? We've done seminars, we have an on-site learning center, and we not just discovered, we see how hard it is. And the hard part is getting the right people in the, the right seats and consistently filling the space and using our time wisely. So what has been, uh, was started as an experiment really has been something that that person on my staff helps to manage that relationship with White Glove. And, you know, we, we've done these types of seminars with other financial planners and, uh, you know, over the years, but had very uh, low success rate, frankly. And so I was a little skeptical at first as to whether it would work, but I thought, well, it's worth a try because it's really hard work and expensive to fill the space consistently. And so we tried it. And we, you know, revised our processes a little bit and had to learn how to really effectively market to people who didn't know us. And because most of our referrals all came from either former clients or other attorneys, and we were really missing this piece of marketing in our pipeline. We weren't getting to people that didn't already know somebody who knew us. And so this was a big opportunity for us and um, it's really worked to our ab absolute benefit. So we, you know, again, skeptical at first, but it worked out really well. So we, we keep doing it <laughs> and it just keeps yeah. getting better as we get better. So it's, it's been great. And when you and I spoke a few weeks ago, you really stressed that White Glove helped you achieve cash flow stability these last few months. Can you tell me a little bit about that process and how that was able to happen? Sure. I, the first quarter of 2020, we were still, you know, obviously able to do live in-person seminars. And um, that was, you know, it's very effective. You earn people's trust. You get to know them. You get that synergy and energy from being in person. But then when we all had to kind of shelter in place and completely pivot, White Glove pivoted too, and they went to a completely virtual model. And what we've learned is that uh, people are a little more flexible with their time when you can just plug in from anywhere. Um, we are also getting a higher participation rate, which we did not expect. And so I think part of it is just really the convenience factor. And our rate of number of attendees has gone up as people have become more comfortable with the technology. And, um, and so it's been a little bit, we, we had a little bit of a learning curve ourselves in how to really connect with people uh, in a virtual environment because it, it really isn't the same. And so we get as close as we can you know, in a virtual environment, but it really helps. It's essential that uh, you and your team and whoever is presenting stays engaged. Um, in other words, they don't take that opportunity to kind of check out and check their text messages or emails. Um, so, and you have to be well lit. You have to uh, have good microphone and good clarity. So there's some little bugs that we had to work out, but we found that, um, we're also then not constrained by geography. And so it's really been incredibly helpful and I really love it. I'm not sure that we'll ever really go back to in-person. Um, we probably do a blend if anything, but uh, we've been really successful with the virtual environment. And so I think we're just gonna continue to do that. Um, if it's working, don't, 
you know, don't fix it. So it's, it's been really good. Webinars. What are some of the elements that you would accredit to your success with webinars these last few months? I think part of it is, I want to be clear, what I, what, one of the things that I really loved about White Glove is that they have an established program, um, content, and I didn't have to, it's one less thing that I had to develop and create. So I, I create content a lot, but it's, um, and I thought that, you know, because we're so specialized in special needs planning, again, one of the, you know, bread and butter areas that we were missing was the mom and pop easy estate plans. And we weren't getting that business. And that's not something that another attorney, of course, would refer to us. And so it helped us really develop that area of our practice that we were really missing, that good bread and butter estate planning. Um, and the other thing that I loved about it, besides not having to create the content myself, was that um, I have to admit I was a little, I would say reluctant because I liked the control over the content. Now, to be fair, you do have control over the content, but it was a broad brush, a general, general knowledge of estate planning. And I thought that I was, you know, my inkling is always to go more specialized, whatever my specialty is, which is elder law and special needs planning. But there's a lot of other specialties out there, tax, real estate, you know, all different areas of probate, guardianship, very niche areas, even within the probate and estate planning world, high net worth, you know, take your pick. But what I discovered is that people, the general public don't always know what they need. They don't know what they don't know. They don't know what it's called, uh, what kind of lawyer you need when you have a, a child with disabilities or you're you know, having to take care of your elderly parents and you need some help uh, or, or any other types of things. I know there's people that do pet trusts, gun trusts, and we all have our niche, but this is a really broad brush and it casts a big net. And so that was an unexpected gift uh, to us and to our firm. And so I really do appreciate the fact that, you know, we started off, you know, being kind of, uh, I don't know, closed minded, but we gave it a try and it has ended up being really great because we, we do capture those families that really need our specialty help and they just didn't know it. And so that has been super helpful. But as far as like, virtual and really compelling uh, or, or getting that high rate of retention out of virtual presentations. I think that what we've learned is sound quality makes a big difference. Um, be careful about your background. Um, you can probably tell I'm a little pixelated because this is not my real background. Um, my real background is fine. It's just not as nice and pretty as what you see here. So I would say be careful of the background of where you present. Don't do it from a bedroom. Um, I've even seen newscasters do it from, you know, they're, they're broadcasting from a bedroom. Um, I just don't think that comes across as very professional. Um, there's... Uh, you have to be careful about the lighting. Make sure there's no lighting in back of you because it creates, you know, it's like taking a photograph where it's, you're all dark. You want to be well lit. You want to be able to be heard. Um, and, you know, just kind of those basics, making sure you have good equipment. Um, and that makes a lot of difference. But also talking into the camera. And again, don't check out when, like if you have a co-presenter, it's really, people are watching you. And... They're looking at you and seeing how you respond. And if you're not engaged with your co-presenter, they're not going to be either. And so making sure that you have that synergy and that energy that you're bringing to that environment. Um, it can be a little bit more difficult. So one of the things that I do a lot of times when I'm presenting is I actually have a, you know, my my camera and my monitor is on a stand that is adjustable. So I will raise it so that I can stand and present um, so that I bring a little more energy. Um, but I have to say one of my favorite things about White Glove is that I'm not always one presenting. It's a great way to develop uh, rainmaking abilities in your associate, whether it's a new associate or just new to your firm. Um, and even a paralegal. I've had my rock star 30 plus year, you know, estate planning paralegal do a presentation. And I have to tell you, she got a higher retention rate than any of the lawyers. 
And that was a pleasant and wonderful, wonderful gift because what it meant was that we could be, we could spread that responsibility across the firm. And it certainly gave her a nice boost of, you know, confidence. She really knows what she's talking about. And um, she could present with skill, clarity, sincerity, compassion, and, um, and she really gained people's trust quite quickly. And so we were thrilled with that result and proud of her. So that's what I like about the whole white glove model. It's not dependent on me as the owner of the firm um, to be the hero and to be the star of the show. So it requires you uh, as the owner of the firm or the managing attorney to also kind of check, check yourself about you know, how committed you are to your development of your team. And it gives you an opportunity to do that and to allow them space to bring more to the firm, rain make, and it's not all on you. So I really appreciate that and really enjoy that part of this experience. So it's been, it's been hugely successful for us in being able to do that. All right. Well, bring it up kind of back to the partnership. You know, in previous conversations that we've had, you have partnered up with Kelly Boyd of InvestWise Financial to host seminars and webinars. I'd like to hear a little bit about how that relationship between an, an attorney and advisor helps make for better webinars. Sure. I think that one is that uh, Kelly has, she is a subtenant uh, in our suite and she is, you know, so it's the relationship started kind of that way. And then she asked us to be a co-presenter for some of her seminars. And so then we started doing them regularly with her. And what we've discovered is one, initially we just liked each other. Like we have common goals, we have um, common values and a common commitment to excellent client service. And so when you share values and commitment and drive to grow and grow your firms, there was already a lot of synergy there. And so then when we started presenting together, Kelly is a very gifted presenter and she's also extremely, she's a great financial advisor. So that helps, <laughs> you know, she really knows what she's doing and she gains people's trust very quickly because she gives them really valuable advice. And so what we've really taken to is that team approach so that these aren't just separate silos when you're looking at helping families so you can't just have a great estate plan and then the financial plan isn't really done isn't uh, maintained isn't you know the people don't have the information that they need and when it comes to things like uh, planning for retirement making sure they're going to have adequate income when do you uh, elect to take social security and retire or keep working, you know, there's all kinds of different variables involved. I don't do that type of planning, but it's integral and really important as part of my planning as well, especially in light of uh, families with disabilities. And so when they take retirement, the timing and how we'll impact and do the analysis on their income uh, is really, really important. So that synergy has, been a tremendous help, not just to our, our firm, but also our clients. And so we have become uh, much more vocal about making sure that people have that really good uh, financial plan. And so whether it's a blended family, special needs families, or some other particular situation, our benefit is that we can identify gaps in say coverage or insurance or long-term care but then Kelly and her team will take the time to really explain the ins and outs, uh, identify a recommendation and why it makes a difference in the client's life and helps them meet their goals. And then of course, when it comes to integrating financial assets within their estate plan, you know, Kelly is fantastic when it comes to that and makes that actually happen very quickly and easily. Just like, you know, we have relationships with other financial advisors, but I have to tell you, Kelly's, Kelly's always my go-to. And uh, we are her go-to firm when it comes to estate planning. And so when you have that relationship of trust, there's a lot of synergy and it's reflected in our retention rate. And so we do really well with these. Um, I consider a 50% retention rate consistently, that is, to me, that's knocking it out of the park. Um, because not everyone's going to be a good fit. Um, you know, we, we are not the lowest price. If people are really price sensitive, we're not the right firm. 
but we can feel good about the fact that they've gotten some education and we can refer, I'm happy to refer out to a colleague who, you know, will meet their needs at the price point that they, that they want to pay. And that's just an additional service. So it, to me, it's completely okay um, to help people by referring them out to colleagues that will really help them. Um, but otherwise I'm incredibly pleased with the retention rate. It's well worth the investment of the time and the resources to do this. Absolutely, you know, and I know anyone watching this video, I know they're even more curious about some of that retention rate and what some of those results are looking like. Um, out of all of the webinars that you've hosted so far, how many have you hosted with Kelly? We generally do about two a month. Excellent. And so um, what other kind of results other than, you know, a phenomenal 50% retention rate, what other aspects would you say kind of impacted their ROI and what did that ROI look like in other aspects? I think that um, about, so I have the stats I looked at it. It's on average, we have 20 to 30 people attending or households. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about that is that when you do this, you, pay for the people who actually show up, which as you know, I'm sure we all know that anytime you do a webinar, um, usually you get somewhere around half to 75% of the people who register to actually show up. And if it's in person, it's closer to 50%, but we have found in a virtual environment, it's closer to 75%. And I think a lot of that is just convenience, frankly. So, yeah, but that's, that's great. It means that they're engaged and they're participating. Um, and I would say the average, you know, because of partly because of where we are in Michigan, the average asset size is, I would say, fairly modest means, means of under a half a million. Um, and then for each webinar, again, we have about 20 to 30 people on average attending. So even if you take, just say the average of this, say 25 people show up, um, you know, at least half of those will, will sign up as clients. And the average fee, I would say somewhere in the $2,200 range. So we've had over, we've probably earned an additional quarter million roughly this year to, uh, which goes a long way, <laughs> you know, especially when you have a, a really shaky environment. And we did take a month off uh, during um, when everyone was kind of recalibrating. Mm -hmm in uh, later, late March and April. So that all being said, I'm, I'm incredibly pleased with that result. And it's, again, this didn't take any effort on my part. So I was able to simply guide and direct the team, support the team, we refined our processes to help accommodate people. And the people who have, you know, where we've been retained as counsel has just been, they're great people. They've been really nice to work with. And um, the other advantage to this is that it's not just, of course, those particular people, but also one of the things that we haven't really tracked is, uh, or as part of these statistics, are the people that they've referred. And so like one family um, just paid for her two adult children because she believed in the process so much. And um, we loved working with them that she paid for her, both of her, daughters to have their estate plans done and they are grown and have their own families with children but they they believed in it so strongly they were like i just want them to do it it's our gift to them and we're just doing it so you know that's that's just one of the other benefits and then you also get the benefit of the people who have registered and are interested but didn't attend for whatever reason and so you can continue to market to them as well and um, so they eventually show up, you know, not everybody shows up at the same time, which is completely fine as long as they show up. Um, and so again, it, it takes a process. And so you'll develop your own way of dealing with that and continuing to market to those folks as well over time. I like the idea of, you know, you each have buy-in. Um, so both you and the advisor share on the expense of bringing people um, to your to your platform to be able to learn and to educate. And, you know, the thing is, it's also not a big commercial. So the people will naturally, it, it, you know, it's not a hard sell at, at any point. It's really focused on the education and that's a natural draw for people. And one of the big advantages is that um, 
work by working together on these things, we, we know what the foundation of the education of the client has. And so whether Kelly's doing a seminar on social security or on retirement planning, um, I know she's done a couple on the secure act, having us together in, in being able to play off of each other, I think makes it a little more interesting, frankly, to the audience. And, and, and so Kelly's team and our team have grown as a result of this. And um, we're, we're thrilled with each other's success. And so I know, you know, people, I have to tell you, I've never had such a, such a successful relationship, a symbiotic relationship with another advisor. So it's, I, I can't say enough about it. And if you get matched, it's kind of like a, you know, dating, making sure that there's some good synergy um, and some good, you know, and obviously it comes from shared values and um, shared processes. So that, that makes all the difference. And um, one of the things that we've started doing is we have uh, short uh, bi-monthly meetings. Our teams will get together, Kelly's team and my team, to talk about um, what's next, how we can refine our processes better, how we can better serve people, um, and other opportunities that might uh, present itself. So we didn't start off doing that, and I wish we had. So as you're beginning this journey or if you're thinking about trying this out, um, I can't recommend enough. Just the short, regular meetings um, to really make sure that you're, you're getting that good bond and your teams are getting to know each other um, because that has also contributed to our success. Because it really, it really is like dating. A business relationship, you invest so much time into it where... But, but I, honestly, one of the best things is, is being able to, um, one is a little bit of a, it holds each other accountable to making yeah. sure that you're getting some good, honest feedback on where processes fall short. Um, and not in a negative way, just you're really helping each other and learning from each other. There's some things that she does that I'm like, ooh, I can do that. That Maybe that would make a difference in my practice. Because the, the idea that we have completely separate um, business models is really a false one. We both offer services, professional services, just different services. But the way that we serve the client, the processes that are involved for, and the necessity of good follow-up and having good team members is critical uh, for everyone and for, for all of us. And I've learned a lot um, just in having these open dialogues about what's working, what we can do better, um, and that has created, you know, some of this energy around some of these changes. And what I like about White Glove too is that if we need something or we want to try something, they're open to it. So they're open to not just growth. I mean, how easy would it have been to just say, well, we're shutting down. We only do live seminars. We're just shutting down and, and that's it. But it was, it's been really good. It's been a really good partnership, a really good synergy and um, I know some, some friends and colleagues that I hold in extremely high esteem might be in a more rural area um, where they really can capitalize on the virtual environment to go beyond their maybe small borders or even if there are large borders that aren't highly, highly populated um, to really stretch and be able to serve people um, and serve people well in, in their state. And this is a, a great gateway to do that. Because you've only been doing this for a few months. I'm really excited to see where you're at in a few months from now and what it keeps looking like in terms of success for you and Kelly and the rest of your team. Um, with that, I truly don't have any additional questions, but is there any final things that you'd like to tell any attorney or maybe even advisor who's watching this video today? say that there's been some real keys to our success and stability through um, not just this uncertain time. Everybody's talking about COVID and everybody's probably got kind of COVID exhaustion, um, if anything. But um, other firms and colleagues, including my own, have gone through trials and tribulations and different challenges. Um, you know, in my friends in Florida were completely out of business for several months because of hurricanes. And um, there's different things that will happen to us in our lives that will throw us away, that will throw us out of kilter. And I think that when you've got a stable, regular, recurring revenue, 
that you don't have to work really hard to, you know, to set up, to, to have that opportunity. Um, this is key. And the other has been Atticus, my coaching group, um, because it, that's where some of these ideas about marketing and processes and uh, honing in on and identifying, oh, where's our gap? Where's, what's going on here? Uh, how do we increase our retention rate? A lot of that work is done in those sessions with my Atticus advisors, my DY, my Dominate Your Market team. And so then we get to bring it to, and some of those ideas, and this is the key implementation. Um, this white glove, this is, this is how we implement some of those ideas. And so um, it's just a big experiment and we just have to keep creating. And I hope that all of you have, you know, if you're listening to this, Give it a chance. If you have particular questions, reach out to me. Um, we've been doing this uh, fairly regularly for about a year, and we've now, uh, you know, increased our staff or in along with our revenue. We're capitalizing on opportunities, and it's really been a really stable generation of income and cash. And as my coach Steve Riley likes to say, you know, cash solves a lot of problems. So. <laughs> Um, it's been really great and it's allowed us to grow as a firm and it's, uh, and it's been really fun in the process. And I love the ability to have other people on my team shine. And so I, you know, Katie, I appreciate your comments, but it's really my team who makes this work. And I'm not just saying that it is truly a team effort. And, um, and that synergy with Kelly's uh, group has just been tremendous and she's grown as a result. So we're very excited and pleased by her success to be and it leap and it just doesn't um, You know, I would say give it a give it a, a little bit, you know, don't expect to hit a home run your first time out because if you're used to Getting referrals from other attorneys and other clients. This is a little bit different of a sell and That's one of the things that at white glove. Uh, they were pretty supportive and helped coached me through that and my team because it was a little bit different, um, a different audience for us. And so it took us a little while. So if you need some support, that's the other thing is they're, they're you know, the white glove people are there to make sure that you're successful too. So um, I would say give it a try. And I love the shared um, buy-in from the other advisor. So it's not like, you know, you're just there doing a little guest show and then you, and then you leave there's actual follow up, which is so key, right? This is, it's a big deal. And I, I wish all of you tremendous success and um, as well as, you know, continuing to make a difference for people in uh, that we assist.